Hello and welcome back to my series on programming the Kurzweil PC3. So in this video what I want to do is continue building on the uh, horn sound that we started on in part one of uh, physical modeling on the PC3. So let's go ahead and just jump right into the programming. So uh, I'm on default program 999, I'm going to hit edit. Now I uh, am going to import into this um, some layers from the sound that I have been working on. Okay, which I call uh, Tuthorn. We ended up um, on layer two last time. In the intervening uh, about year or so, I've been working on this sound and, and, and sort of refining it and tweaking it. So it now has five layers. I'm going to start by importing layers one and uh, layer two. Okay, and then let's get rid of this layer here because we don't need it anymore. Okay, so we're going to delete this layer. Okay, so we have layers one and layers two, which are, are, are pretty much similar to, to what we, we uh, created in the first video. Okay, so um, let me go ahead and play what we have here so you can hear what it sounds like at the moment. Okay, so that's our basic sound that we're, we have to play with. I've added in a few um, control things such as pressure controls noise volume it also controls um, FM um, uh, modulation index and some other things like that so uh, and, and in the next video I'll go over all the nuances that I've set up in this program and to uh, to to uh, get it to respond uh, more like a horn for now though let's go ahead and and create some layers that we will use to implement um, uh, a format filter as part of our horn. So let's go to the uh, layer page, to, to the layer selections. We're going to do uh, new layer. Okay, so now we have a layer three. Let's go out to the alg page. So for this, um, I'm going to pick an album, uh, an algorithm, excuse me, uh, 1027. This algorithm uh, allows me to put two dual block DSP functions in parallel. And that's what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to set this up to uh, be two bandpass filters. Okay. Now let's go ahead and create, uh, before we start talking about uh, modulation sources, uh, and we're going to use sliders to control these bandpass filters, but before we get to that point, let's go over here to the uh, new layer uh, button and soft button. So we've we've created a new layer and its input is going to be layer 3 and we're going to need a an algorithm which I've already created here that allows us to mix these two layers together. So the signal is passing through each of these um, these filters separately and then we're going to mix them over here and not only are we going to mix them but we're going to put some gain blocks on here so that we can control uh, how loud um, the output from each filter is uh, relative to the other filter. So let's start let's start here uh, with Xfade and we're going to program backwards to layer 3. Okay so first of all let's go to the amp page here and on layer 3 let's turn this amp all the way down. Okay so 3, 2, 1 uh, let's turn down layer 2. Okay good. So we have all of our cascading right. Um, the only one that should have any level at all is layer 4. Okay. And let's set this X fade to 50%. Okay. Okay. Uh, while we're in here, let's go ahead and set up these pad amounts. Now, this is one of the things about working with PC3. Um, if you are experiencing funkiness with respect to how loud things are, uh, one thing to do is to check your pads. Even on blocks that don't have anything in them, sometimes the pad will have an effect. So, okay, so there we go. We've we've set all of our pads to six dB. Um, here on our bandpass filters, we have um, some some pretty uh, we have some very narrow bands, so that's why the sound is 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 funky and distorted right now. So let's go ahead and start with this game block. We're going to go to the mod page. 
Now I'm going to use um, sliders 22 through 27 to control these filters and, and to essentially create a, a complex filter, um, uh, a filter with complex response out of these two bandpass filters, which is what we want when we're creating a format filter. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to take the gain down to minus 35 dB. Okay, and I'm going to put gain control on 27 and be able to add all that back. So, okay, so now what I want to do is I also want to do uh, that same thing with this um, gain block. We're going to give it 35, whoops, that's 38. I want 35 dB of uh, depth and then. Okay, so now I can um, one here uh, seems to have. Okay, yeah, we're good. We're good. So this one, let's go to the out page. Yeah, so the second one there is fine. Uh, okay. So, so what you're hearing right now, let me, let me uh, just turn this up because I've been kind of thinking while I'm talking here. So if you notice, um, let's, let's move MIDI 27 all the way up. Let me turn this up a bit. Okay, so there's a bit of distortion on certain keys with that one. There's more distortion on MIDI 26. So what we might want to do is go to the DSP control page and let's pad this just a little bit more. Okay, let's add just a bit more. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I am setting the relative levels between these the outputs of these two filters. Because this algorithm here has this extra none block, it's kind of throwing off our gain structure. So uh, I've gone through now, and by ear I've tuned these with the pad. See, this is 6 dB and this is 18 dB. I've tuned these with the pad parameter to uh, uh, have basically be the same uh, volume so, so I know that uh, my volume levels will be consistent coming out of each filter, uh, which will help in, in, in understanding what's going on. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's pop back down to our filter layer and let's set up all this DSP control. So uh, we're going to start, like I said, we're working backwards here. So let's go to uh, MIDI 25, uh, which is going to control the width of this filter. And then the width of this filter, I'm going to set to... Um, oops. I'm going to set to two octaves, and its frequency I'm going to set to uh, 4,800 cents. Whoops, that was way too big. 4,800. There we go. Okay. Okay. So at the moment, this filter is controlled by MIDI 27. That that's going to control the relative level of this filter. Okay, MIDI 25 controls its width, and MIDI 24 controls the, uh, the frequency that it's set at. Okay. So you can hear what that filter does. Now let's work on the next filter. Let's go ahead and set this depth a little bit differently. Let's set this to... Um, four octaves of depth, so this is two, this is four. Its uh, controller will be MIDI 23, okay? And then for the, uh, for the frequency, we're again going to go with uh, 4,800 cents, okay? And its frequency source will be MIDI 22. These filters, oh, uh, let's do this too. Let's go to the DSP control page. Okay, good. These filters, you'll notice, do not track um, the keys. Okay, the frequency doesn't track the keys, the width doesn't track the keys. And uh, what this what this means is that these filters are going to always be at the same frequency, no matter what key. What key you play.
Okay, so, um, sorry there, I was just messing around a bit with the sliders, but basically the idea is that um, if you have something like a saxophone and it's, it's vibrating because you're blowing air into it and, and the reed's vibrating and that's causing the air to vibrate, um, the saxophone itself is a fixed, uh, fixed length instrument. Um, so, so, so as the body of the saxophone vibrates, it's always going to accentuate certain frequencies no matter what note you're playing. That's what a formant filter basically is useful for. In this case, is uh, emulating that that particular aspect of of a saxophone body. So, um, as we adjust the filters here, you can hear that we have all sorts of um, we can get all sorts of different. sounds, uh, many of them are very unhorn-like, but the but one of the defining aspects of all of these sounds is that they all have um, a sonic signature that's imparted by these filters that's fixed. And that's, that's the real key part. And so what you do is after you've set this up, now it's a matter of hunting around with your filters and adjusting their relative levels. So like for instance, we can work on one band at a time. Okay, that's that's kind of a nice sort of growly frequency there. Okay, so we now have we now have um, a, a sound that um, we can control with the filters. Now it's it still does not sound like a horn, and it doesn't even sound like our finished sound because there's a, a fair amount of stuff that we are going to be doing between um, in the next video to add finesse and grace to this otherwise unruly mess that we have. So the sound results are not quite so impressive yet, but as we refine this, um, we will, we will uh, get to our final sound, which uh, sounds like this. So tune in to the next video when we're going to add in all the little bits and pieces and finishing touches so that we can use um, this, this, this tool that we have with our formant filter to um, emulate uh, a horn, not only its sound, but its physical response as you play it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you uh, next time.